chaos and nothing is going to get better for the world. But when you are a child of God, those things should not shake our, us or our faith. The days ahead are going to be very difficult. But for those who are faithful to God in our giving and our church attendance, God will take care of us. We should be faithful and consistent givers. Not giving every now and then when conditions are favorable, but giving even when times are difficult. That is when our faith is tested. And we put our and we put God to the test, as he said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. When are we tested? It is when we have nothing and we are still able to give. Giving is easy when you have plenty, but try it when you have nothing. It takes a lot of faith to do that. But God says we must test him and see if he will not open the windows of heaven for us. Church, our giving should be faithful and consistent. We are to give faithfully. That is when our hearts are full of faith. That is when we are to give and to do so trusting in God. We trust that he will use our giving to bring about good in his kingdom. And we are to also trust that he will provide for our needs as we give. We see this faith principle in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Do you believe that when you give to the Lord, good comes out of it? Just as a farmer makes an investment when he sows seed into the ground, so too a Christian makes an investment when he or she gives to the Lord. The more a farmer sows, the more he will reap, and the more a Christian gives, the more he or she will reap in the spiritual realm. And do you see the faith principle in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, where Paul says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. This passage is saying, do you want to give sacrificially? Then give in faith, believing that the Lord will meet all your needs, enabling you to give all the more. The Christian is to focus on generosity while trusting that God will meet his every need. Brothers and sisters, let us give faithfully. Point number two is let us give cheerfully. Paul reminds us here that God loves a cheerful giver. I hope that you are blessed when you give. I hope that you do it with a smile on your face. I hope that it brings a sense of satisfaction to you to know that God, by his grace, has enabled you to work hard, to earn a living, and to bring a portion of what you have earned to him as an offering, a sweet smelling aroma. Indeed, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us be cheerful givers. Point number three is let us give the glory to God. Some give but seeking glory for themselves. We ought to give glory to God. I do believe that God is glorified. I do believe that praise to God is provoked when the people of God give generously and their giving is used properly for the building up of the body of Christ, for the furtherance of the kingdom, and for the needs of those around us, especially those in the household of faith. May it be so for us. May our giving as a congregation be to the glory, honor, and the praise of praise to God. Point number four is let us give willingly. And let us do so willingly. Do, not, do you see what Paul says in Corinthians? 9 verse 7, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. You ought not to be forced to give. You should give willingly. No one should twist your arm to give, but do so with love and a willing heart. Ultimately, your giving is between you and the Lord. But notice that Paul's concern that Christians not give reluctantly or under compulsion did not hinder him from exhorting them to give. He exhorts them to give generously here in 2 Corinthians 9 and also in 1 Corinthians verse 16. And this is why I think it is also right to exhort you but to ultimately leave, leave you free from all coercion. Church, let us give willingly. Our giving is to be regular. Giving is to be personal. Giving is a responsibility of every believer. Giving is to be proportional. Set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. What is proportional giving? It means
things, the more that God blesses you, the more you should give. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. God has promised to bless you and give you generously. God uses a law of nature. If you plant only a few seeds, you will reap a small harvest. If you plant many seeds, you will reap a large harvest. God wants us to give generously and cheerfully, not reluctantly or because we feel pressured. God gives back lavishly to generous, cheerful givers, not so that they may satisfy selfish, non-essential desires, but so that they may meet the variety of needs of others. Don't give just so that you can receive a blessing. Give because you love God. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Finally, church, here is my challenge to you. Would you first of all ask yourself the question, am I thinking about money in the right way? Do I see all things as coming from God and myself as a steward of what God has provided? Secondly, would you prayerfully consider your giving? Ask yourself, am I giving worshipfully, sacrificially, faithfully, and with the furtherance of Christ's kingdom in mind? Thirdly, would you check your heart? Would you make sure that whatever you give, be it small or great, be it 1% or 50, that your heart is right before God? Give willingly, cheerfully, and to the glory of the triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. Let me stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our tithes and offerings to you in worship, Lord. Lord Jesus, it is the first fruit of what you have given us, and we plant it in your kingdom today as a seed of blessing, expecting the rich blessings of heaven to be multiplied to us in return. We thank you, Lord, that you rebuked Satan for our sakes. And we stand in agreement with your word that he will not destroy our land. He will not destroy our blessings. And he will not destroy the crop in our field. We are giving faithfully, Lord. We are giving cheerfully. We are giving willingly. And may our giving bring you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, that heaven's unlimited resources are ours in your name. Amen.
Father God, let every word that is preached, mighty God, that is shared, oh Father God, let it work in our hearts, oh Father God. Let it create a desire, oh God, in our hearts, oh mighty God, for you, oh Lord. And let it draw us closer and closer to you, oh Father God. Father God, let us discover your will for us today, Jesus. Let us discover, Almighty God, your desires, O oh God, that you want, O oh Father God. Let not our will be done, Almighty God, but let your will be done because it is better, O oh Father God. It's better than what we want. It's better than what we desire, Almighty God. Father God, we thank you this morning that we could gather, O oh Father God, in your presence, Almighty oh God, with your people, O oh God, to commune with you, O oh Father God. Lord, we thank you, Almighty God, for the brothers and sisters, O oh Father God, that's gathered in this place this morning, O oh Father God. The church is not a building, Almighty oh God, but it is the people, O oh Father God. It is your Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us, Almighty oh God. And we know, Almighty oh God, whether it be in this building or another building, O oh Father God, your presence is with us. It goes with us, Almighty oh God. We are the church, Almighty oh God. We are, Father God, the warriors of God that you have sent out, Almighty God. Lord, may you continue to do a work in us, oh Father God. Yes, oh God, today we, we come and we celebrate, Father, a new beginning, Almighty God. We celebrate your work, Almighty God. We know that there is so much purpose, Almighty God, that is about to be birthed, oh Father God. We thank you, oh God, and we trust in you. We trust in you for more, Almighty God. We know, Almighty God. God, that you are not done, oh Father God. You haven't said you are done. We know, oh God, that this is just the beginning, oh mighty God. Lord God, may you lead us today. May you lead our hearts, oh mighty God, in the right direction, oh Father God. May our ears, oh mighty God, be open to every word that comes from you, oh mighty God. Lord God, let your presence, oh Father God, let it dwell in us, oh mighty God. Let it dwell in this place, oh mighty God, in every heart, oh mighty God. Father God, we say today we are ready to listen to what you have to say, oh mighty God. May you quiet every other spirit, oh mighty God, that's in this place, that's in our hearts. May you quiet the fear, oh mighty God. Quiet the doubt, oh mighty God. Quiet the worries, oh mighty God, that we may have, oh Father God, so that we may listen to your word, Almighty God. Lord, we say, oh God, may you replace, oh God, every word of negativity, every word of doubt that is in our minds, Almighty God. May you replace it, oh Father God, with your life-giving word, Almighty God. May you come in us, Almighty God, and change us, oh Father God. Transform our minds, Almighty God. Give us new hearts this morning, oh Father God. Let our desires, oh God, be your desires, Almighty God. Lord God, we thank Thank you, oh God, for giving your life, oh Father God, for us, oh God. We thank you that we are not alone, oh Father God, but but your spirit, almighty God, is with us, oh God. It's with us everywhere we go, almighty God. It's with us in our relationships, oh God. It's with our children, oh Father God, as they go to school, almighty God. It's with us in our places of work, almighty God. We thank you, oh Father God. We pray, almighty God, this morning that you may teach us, oh God. God. Teach us words, Almighty oh God. Teach us things, Almighty oh God, that will quench us, that will satisfy our hearts, Almighty oh God. Only you, O oh Father God, can fulfill us. Only you can satisfy us, Almighty oh God. So we come to your word, O oh God. We come to your living waters, Almighty oh God, that can quench us, Almighty oh God. Father God, may we leave this place, Almighty oh God, filled, O oh God, filled, Almighty oh God, that there is no space, Almighty oh God, for any doubt, there is no space for negativity, there is no space for fear, Almighty oh God. Lord God, let your word, Almighty oh God, let it come work in us, so oh God. Let it take a place, so oh God, in us, so oh mighty God. Father God, let our trust in you grow, Almighty oh God. We thank you, O oh Father God, that you are here in this place, Almighty oh God. We trust, O oh God, in your word, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the strength, Almighty oh God, that you give us day after day, Almighty oh God. Lord, we thank you for healing, Almighty oh God. Lord, we refuse, Almighty oh God, to go, O oh God, from this place without the healing that we've come, Almighty oh God, to get, O oh Lord. Lord, you are our healer, Almighty oh God. There is no better 
doctor, Almighty God, than you, O oh Lord. There is no better, Almighty oh God. You know us, you created us, Almighty oh God. You open wombs, you close wombs, Almighty oh God. Father God, we trust in you, O oh Father God. Our trust is in you, O oh God. Lord, show off with us today, Almighty oh God. Show off with us to the world, Almighty oh God. Show off with us, Almighty oh God, that we are your chosen people, Almighty oh God. We are your chosen Almighty God, to distinguish us, Almighty God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank you, O oh Father God, just for being you, Almighty God. We want to thank you, O oh God, for what you've done in our lives, Almighty God, for what you continue to do, Almighty God. Lord God, just open our spirits, Almighty God, this morning to be able to hear what you are saying, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh God. We say we love you, Almighty God. We pray, Almighty God, the love you've given us, Almighty God. May we give it out to the world, O oh Father God. We thank you, Jesus. We just bless your holy name, Almighty God. And we declare the victory is ours, O oh God. We declare it, Almighty God. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Amen. that you have given me to share God's word with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is what the Lord has been sharing with me when I asked him for a word to share, O oh God. And if I have to title this message, I would call it, The Currency of Heaven is Hunger and Thirst. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our future depends on hunger and thirst for God. Amen? Our relationships depend on our hunger and thirst for God. Our jobs and our interactions depend on our hunger and thirst for God. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I just want to give you a quick story that I've been thinking about this week. So I have this colleague of mine that I work with. And every single day, this colleague has something to complain about. And if I can be honest, she has something to complain about every single hour. Even half an hour, she has every single thing to complain about. Amen? I'm sure we've had people like that that we've come across. Am I right? And she will complain about how the company is paying us so less. And she will complain about the people in management, how they do not know how to run the place. And if you listen to this person talk, you just get a spirit of negativity. And you see how her life or these people's life just becomes miserable. You can actually feel it when someone is talking. So even in the meetings when, when she gives these negative comments, people, people just have started to ignore everything she's saying now. It's not really good to ignore when someone is speaking, amen? amen. And when I begin to realize that yes, they are the pro they are these problems that she's saying. But I began to realize it's the way in which we receive these problems. It's the way in which we choose to see these problems. Amen? And I began to realize that many of these people who are filled with this negativity and try to influence people around, they are not satisfied and they are not fulfilled. Amen? Because they have not drunk from the living waters. Amen? And the only thing, brothers and sisters, and we know it, the only thing that can quench our thirst and fulfill us is the living word of God. Amen? And we look at the people around us to fulfill us. We look at more money so that we can buy a house. We, can look, we look at more money to buy a better car. We look at more money to see how we can better our lives. Amen, brothers and sisters? And we think that if only I was put in that management situation, I could make a better change. If only I was the president or if I was the mayor, I could do better. If, I, if only I was the pastor, I could do much better. I could save more souls. Amen? Amen. And we have this mentality and we think that if, if it was only I in that place, I can fulfill these needs of the world. Amen? And the truth is, brothers and 
brothers and sisters, nothing in the world can fulfill us. Nothing can satisfy us. Even our own minds may fail. And running after these things, brothers and sisters, will make us thirstier and hungrier than ever. Amen? And it will make us so tired running after these things. Amen? Only for a temporary happiness, so God. And yes, uh, we keep looking at our, what our neighbor has and we, keep, we try to run after what they have and we, we just wish that we have begun where our neighbors have begun, amen? And we feel so tired after that, after running after all those things, amen? And this colleague of mine, and she keeps speaking, you listen and you keep taking this negativity in and after these people with all this negativity, it leaves you feeling so drained and your spirit just feels so drained and you feel you feel just this negative feeling when people speak to you because when people speak it's as if they're speaking to your spirit and things that you are taking in your spirit amen but when we open the word and as we read the word we instantly feel this motivation we feel that we are alive and it feels like we are not slowing down. And honestly, if I, if I have to share with you brothers and sisters, every morning before this person used to come into my office, I used to just read a little bit, a little bit of the word. And I, I became so positive and I had this new energy. And when this woman walked into my office, a woman 
was hungry for healing from God. And it is, and there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and who had spent all that she had and was no better but rather was getting worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Amen. This woman was not concerned about others who wanted an appointment with Jesus. Her hunger and her thirst and her desire for healing did not allow her to stop until she touched Jesus and got a healing from Jesus. So this woman shows us how hungry and thirsty she was. For she did not, she did not wait to have a conversation with Jesus. She did not wait to ask him, Father can you heal me? But she went and she took and she believed, she trusted that the only thing that could heal her was Jesus. Amen? And one thing heaven can never ignore, brothers and sisters, is a hungry or thirsty soul. If God cared for the sparrows and the lilies, the Bible tells us how much more would He care for us. Amen? Amen. Let us also turn in our Bibles and learn more about those that hunger for God. Let us move to Mark Chapter 10. And we are reading from verse 46. And the people 
people hushed him. But Bartimaeus knew that there was some hope. He knew that there was no one that could heal him but Jesus. So he tried and he shouted. And he says, Jesus, can I recover my sight? And to Bartimaeus, all he knew was, this man could heal me. And he probably asked, who is this Jesus? And the people said, this is the Jesus who healed the sick and raised the dead. Now we know so much about Jesus. We know that he can be our healer. We know that he can be our financer. We know that he can be our guide. And to Bartimaeus, that was all he needed to know. He needed to know that Jesus was healer. And today, this morning, we know who he is. Amen? We know he is I am. And for us to know that is all that we need. Amen? That is all that we need to put our trust in him. Just like Bartimaeus. Now, are we as hungry as Bartimaeus was? Are we thirsty? Do we want to be healed of our blindness? Do we want to be healed like him? Amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to Isaiah 55. So we do it in 
need an effort to get from the Lord. Amen. And it's always what we think we want. It's always what we think will satisfy our needs. Amen. And if we read this verse again, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you desires. He will give you desires. The Lord knows us better than ourselves. And what He wants to give is better than what we think we desire and what we think we need. Amen. Because most of the time we really don't know what we desire. We really don't know what we need. Amen. For one day we want something and the next day we want something else. Amen. We also, we also have this mindset, we change with the weather. Amen. But the thing is that we desire for us is things that cannot fulfill us. Amen. But the thing is that the Lord desires for us is things to fulfill us. Amen. So if we read this verse again, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. What we should be thinking is, what does the Lord desire for us? What is His will for my life? So we ought to delight ourselves in the Lord so that we can find out what is it that He desires for us. So that our desires can become aligned with His desires. Amen. And Jesus even says, let your will be done and not mine. Because His will is much better than our will. Amen. is 
with marrow and fatness, and my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate day and night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. Amen? So David shows his satisfaction in the Lord. He finds joy, amen? He finds joy in the word of God. He finds joy in meditating in God's word. And this is the joy we can only find in, in the Lord, amen? amen? And thirdly, he trusts in God. He says, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it will go into the depths of the earth. So just before David could write this psalm, David was being chased by another king. And even one of his sons had abandoned him and, and disobeyed him and was also after his life so he could take the throne. But David trusts in God. When he's about to lose everything, he still says, my soul clings to you. And he trusts in the Lord and he says, your right hand upholds me. Amen? And he's not worried about those that seek to destroy him. Because he has this trust in the Lord. And he says, they will be delivered over the power of the sword. And they will be a prey for foxes. Amen? So this shows David's trust in the Lord. Amen? And brothers and sisters, when we worship the things we want, whatever that matters to us is the thing that we worship. Amen? We put the highest value on things. We have concluded in our heart that that is the thing that is the most important in our life. So when we are worshipping, we declare what we value the most. And how do we know what we worship? Amen? And David is telling us here, the thing that matters the most to him, the thing that he wants the most is God. Amen? And after receiving a kingdom, after receiving so many things in David's life, he still longs for God. Because he knows that the only thing worth yearning for, the only thing that can fulfill him, is God. Amen? And he says, you can have my kingdom, you can have my throne, but all I want is you. So he shows an understanding that only the Lord can satisfy him. Amen? And we see great kings of the Bible that have the same yearning. They write songs to just, just to show how their yearning for God is so deep. They've been given so many things, thrones and kingdoms and people and many houses, but those didn't satisfy them. Amen? Amen? And as we come to church and we read God's word, because we want more than what the world has to give us. Amen? We do not come to church for God. We come for ourselves, amen. We come that that the thing inside of us that feels empty, we want it to be filled, we want it to be satisfied. We all have that longing, amen. And for us to be satisfied and fulfilled, it depends on how much we thirst and we hunger after God. Amen. A man who has been in the desert and a man who a spring or a well, if we have to pull them out after many days, we'll find the man in the desert that's more thirstier. Amen? So how much space in our lives are we giving God to say that we are thirsty and we are hungry? Or are we letting the world fill us up with other things, fill us up with temporary things, that only allow us to be satisfied just for a time being. Even if we buy a house, even if we buy a car, we get married, we feel a temporary happiness. Amen? It gives us a small happiness, but we are not really truly fulfilled. Amen? I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but when we come to the Word of God, we feel fulfilled. We feel that thing in us is quenched. Amen. So this morning, brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves how thirsty we are, how hungry we are, 
for the word of God. Amen. And we read, we read in the Bible, we read, we read the account of what is, we read the account of the woman uh, with the issue of blood. And we see their hunger, we see their thirst. Because they know that there is nothing. There have been too many doctors. There have been too many physicians. What happens when all of these things fail us, brothers and sisters? We run back to God, amen? We run to Him because our trust in Him is in Him. We know that He will satisfy us. We know that He will fulfill us. Amen, brothers and sisters. We will not feel that we need those things. 
we will not feel like that is for us. Because once we're in the kingdom, we have God's eyes. We see what He wants for us. Amen, brothers and sisters? Because we keep asking ourselves, why am I not there? Why have I not achieved these things? But those are the things of the world. Amen? And there's so much better for us. There is so much better. And only God knows that plan. We do not know that plan. So today, if we can just make up our minds and say, God, what are your desires? What, are your, what is your will? What have you planned out for my life? What is that thing that you're going to give me that is going to satisfy me? That's going to fulfill my needs? Amen? And let us put aside the things that we thought that will fulfill us. Let, let us not look to these things. Let us not pray, God, I need this, I need that. But God, I need your desire. I need your will. I need your plan. What have you drafted out for me? Isn't, doesn't that sound better, brothers and sisters? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this is just a short word, but I hope that we have received something from this word. Amen. I hope that whatever the Lord has shared through me, that it has just stirred up a desire in your heart. That it has made you feel more alive, oh my God. And has just motivated you. And, and your heart has started questioning and longing for God so that we may grow in His, in His ways. We may grow in His world. Amen, brothers and sisters. I just really pray that whatever I have shared this morning, that we have got something from it. Amen, brothers and sisters. Let us just bow our heads in prayer, brothers and sisters. Father, this morning we come with open hearts and open ears, and we pray, Almighty God, that we may be fulfilled in your word, we may be satisfied in your word, Almighty God. We pray that your waters, Almighty God, that as we drink from your word, Almighty God, we may be filled, we may be satisfied, O oh Father God. Father, today we say, we put our trust in you, O oh Father God. Father God, we know who you are, O oh God. And we trust what you have said for our lives, Almighty oh we trust that you have said you will prosper us and we trust that is it, oh Father God. Father, we thank you this morning that as we leave this place, Almighty God, you may go with us, oh Father God, and you may be with us, although we are in this world, Almighty God, but we are of your kingdom, oh God. We do not move, oh Father God, with the winds of this world. We do not think, oh Father God, as the world thinks, but we think, Almighty God, with your spirit, Almighty God. Father God, today, O oh God, as we read your word, Almighty God, and as we meditate upon your word, O oh Father God, may you renew our hearts, renew our spirits, O oh Father God, and transform our minds, O oh God, so that we may be able to think, O oh Father God, as you would like us to. We may be able to desire, O oh Father God, all that you desire for us, Almighty God. May we wait upon you, O oh Father God. May we have an excellent, O oh Father God, trust in you, Almighty oh God. Father God, we are excited this morning. We are excited for this journey, O oh Father God, that we are on with you. We are excited to discover your plans that you have for us. We are just excited, mighty God. Whatever you've drafted, O oh Lord, according to your will, Almighty God, for our lives, Almighty God, we say we cannot wait, Almighty God, to discover what it is that you have planned for us, Almighty God. We cannot wait, Almighty God, for it is so much better living with you, Almighty God. Your will, Almighty God, is so much better, Almighty God. 
We cannot wait, oh Father God. We are so excited, Almighty God, to start this journey with you, Almighty God. Oh Father God, when others see doubt, Almighty God, when they see fear, Almighty God, when there's worry, Almighty God, when others see diseases, Almighty God, we see you, oh God. We see our healer. We see, Almighty God, the one who guides us. We see, Almighty God, the lamp to our feet, Almighty God. We see the light of the world, Almighty God. We see that it's better to come, Almighty God. We see that whatever circumstance or situation, Almighty God, that is troubling our mind, Almighty God. We see you, Almighty God, helping us through it, Almighty God. Father, we just thank you, O oh God. You are great, Almighty God. Your thoughts are greater than ours, Almighty oh God. We pray this morning, O oh Father God, that you may reveal, O oh God, your thoughts that you have concerning us, concerning our lives, concerning our relationships, Almighty oh God, concerning our careers, concerning our health, our bodies, Almighty oh God. May you reveal it to us, Almighty oh God. Father God, we pray, Almighty God, for our hunger and a thirst, Almighty God, like never before, Almighty God, for you, O oh God, for your things, Almighty God. We pray, Almighty God, that we may not thirst and hunger after the things of the world, Almighty God, that does not satisfy us, that does not fulfill us, Almighty God. We know, O oh God, that it is only you, O oh God, that can fill us that can satisfy us, that can give us the joy, O oh mighty God, give us everlasting joy, O oh Father God. We know that it is only you, O oh mighty God. Let us set our hearts, O oh mighty God, on you, O oh God. Let us set our minds, O oh mighty God, on you, O oh Father God, that we can move towards the things, O oh God, of your kingdom, O oh Father God, that is so much better, O oh God, so much better than this world that can offer, Almighty God. Lord, we just thank you, O oh Father God, as we go out, O oh Father God. May you lead us, may you guide us. May you give us new desires. May you show us your plans, O oh Father God. May we be able to trust in you just how David trusted in you, O oh God. When we have nothing, O oh Father, May we cling to you, O oh God. O oh Father, you are our helper, O oh God. May we not seek help from men, O oh Father God, but may we seek help from you, O oh God. Who has a better plan, O oh Father God, than you, O oh mighty God? Almighty God, 
sing today, have your way, almighty God. Have your way in us. 